Understanding price and volume is something that's critical to our success in the stock market. Understanding price and volume helps us figure out if we are going to be moving higher, if we're going to start moving lower, or if we're in store for some choppy sideways action. So in this video, I want to give you a basic understanding of price and volume. We're going to be looking at some charts. Specifically, we're going to be looking at some really, really basic charts to start. We're going to be looking at high, low, close charts, and I'll show you exactly what that means. So here is what a high, low, close chart is going to look like. First, you have your little line right there. And what this signifies is the high of the day and the low of the day. And then somewhere in the spectrum, you're going to see another little line. That is going to be where price closed for the day. So that is the basics of what a high, low, close or HLC chart is going to look like. Now, what becomes interesting is where this little line uh, is on this bar and also the size of the bar. So for example, if the bar is a lot shorter or if it's a lot longer and where that little line is on the bar, where that little line falls is going to tell us if we close near the top of the range for the day, somewhere in the middle of the range for the day, or near the lows of the day. The reason why that becomes significant is because when we are trying to see which way price is going, what matters the most is the close. It helps indicate which way price is going to continue moving. More often than not, when we see a close near the top of the range, it's signifying something that could be bullish. When we see price close near the low of the range, it's something that's going to be bearish. When we see large ranges like this, it's showing us increased volatility. And we're going to want to look at this relative to the other price bars. Now, you could look at this on any time frame. You could look at it on daily time frames. You could look at it on weekly time frames. You could look at it on monthly time frames. You could look at it intraday too. It, it, it really doesn't matter. It, it's always going to work the same way, no matter what type of chart we're looking at, whether it's daily, weekly, or monthly, it all this stuff works exactly the same. Now let's add volume to the mix. Okay, let's start with this. So when we start adding volume to the mix, we have our price, we have our price bars, right? And let's say we closed here, we closed here, and then we closed over here. And then we have some volume bars, and volume is typically going to be at the bottom of the chart, and we could have a volume bar, let's say this size. Then over here, we have another volume bar, volume's a little bit higher on that one. And then let's say this one has a much higher volume bar. So what this is going to show us is the number of shares being traded on these particular days, weeks, months, hours, minutes, so whatever kind of time frame we're looking at, this is going to show us how many buyers and sellers there were. The reason why that becomes significant is because of what's happening here. This chart that price and volume action, when put together, is starting to tell us a story. So over here, we saw that price rallied, and but by the end of the day, it closed off of its high. Then on the following day, week, whatever, 
we see this price bar and it made a fresh high, but it closed near the bottom of the range, but pretty close to what we saw on the prior day of the prior week. Volume was a little elevated. Then on this day, we see a huge sell off undercuts that low, but it reversed off of it and then closed near the high. And it did that on the biggest volume of these three days, weeks, whatever. What that indicates is that down here, I would start to look at that as a potential floor because price ran down to that level, reversed off of it, closed near the top of its range, and it did that on elevated volume. The reason why the elevated volume matters so much is because what it's telling us, and all these charts are telling us a story, what this one is telling us is that when price traveled down to this level over here, it found a lot of buyers and it bid it all the way back up, back to this level here. So if I'm seeing price action that looks like this, I would start to become a little bit more bullish within the broader context of whatever the stock of the market or whatever it is that we're looking at is doing. And I would look at this level right here as the support zone, the level where if price starts to come back to this level and close below it, then I would look to exit the trade or potentially get short. Now let's put all this together and look at some real charts. Here's a current chart of a stock that Chart Your Trade MRI found way back, no, way off this chart, back in uh, 2017, early 2017, even going back to 2016. And it's a great display of how price and volume play out on the chart. So. What we have here is both a daily chart up here and then a weekly chart down here. And this is a chart provided by TradingView. TradingView, if you come over here, you get to change the different types of charts. TradingView calls this one a bar chart and it, I have it set up to just show the high, low, and close that we've been talking about. When we're looking at this chart, and let's look at the, the weekly chart first. You can see how you have the price action and it's rallying, and then you have this reversal week here where price was at the high at some point, and then it closed near the low for the week, and it did it on relatively uh, below average volume, but volume that was higher than the past couple of weeks. That little reversal, or what turned out to be a larger reversal there, typically is a bearish sign where you make a new high, you close near the lows. It's not something that you want to see. That That's something that's showing us that price moved to a certain point and then there was a whole bunch of people that wanted to sell and start to get out of that position. And price wasn't strong enough. There wasn't enough demand to keep price there. And so it closed the period, day, week, month, intraday, whatever, at the bottom of that range. So that's something that's going to be bearish. And then here it, it turned out to be bearish. Price continued to move down, and we, we see over here that volume uh, is picking up. Uh, so more sellers are coming in. Over here, this week is interesting because a look at how wide that bar is, and also look at where it started to get support, right? Got support right there. Where price stops, uh, and this is a little bit more advanced, it's always good to look to the left of the chart to see why is it stopping here? Is there a 
moving average, which we haven't really spoken about yet. Is there another support level from another price zone where it's done one of these reversals? In this case, over here, what's that price? That price is about $38. So come over here. And well, what's this high over here? 30, 36, pretty close to 36. So one could make the argument over here that, oh, you're starting to get support at this prior base over here, right? And so that may get you a little bullish, but given this price action, given how wide this is, it's a pretty wide range. When we're going to actually trade any of these, we want the price ranges to be real, real tight. And the reason why we want it to be so tight is because that's what's going to determine our potential risk. We're going to want to get out if this down here is undercut. So it would be much better for us to be able to get in say on something like this where the price range is very tight versus something over here where we would look to get in and we would need to sell down here right so if we were buying this breakout over here where it just poked its nose above it then that's a much larger price range to have to deal with so ggal continued to consolidate and you can see that it starts to pull into this red line here. Now that is a 10 week moving average. The reason why the 10 week moving average is significant at all is because that's what major institutions look at. Typically you'll see in leading stocks that if a stock does get support, it's going to get support right at around this 10 week line on a weekly chart or correspondingly on the daily chart, it's the 50 day moving average. So if it gets support right around there, which it did right here, that's typically a good sign for the stock. Something that says, hmm, maybe, maybe this is something that we should consider taking up as a position, right? So because it's on the radar and because we see it pulling into that 50 day moving average, we check the volume, right? Is selling starting to dry up? So we look down here and we could see that volume is pretty low. It's below average and it's also below volume for most of the prior weeks and the volatility is starting to dry up as well. Okay, so maybe we take, we buy the following week because it breaks above this week's high, it breaks above, uh, and this is getting a little bit more advanced now too, it starts to rally above some descending trend lines, right? Depending on how aggressive we want to be with these trend lines. This one right here, this one that I just drew, that's a little aggressive. This trend line here is more conservative. What makes it aggressive or conservative is really the slope of the line. So. This one over here is uh, far less steep than this one. So that, that's what I'm talking about when I say aggressive or, or not aggressive in relation to the slopes of the line. But over here, you start to really break out and rally. And you're doing that on elevated volume. And then notice how you're now closing near the top of the range. And you're doing that again over here and over here and over here. Over here, now you're starting to close in the middle of the range. Volume is starting to dry up a little bit. You pull back, but then you continue to rally. And then big volume comes in. It's telling us a story. It's telling us that this stock is under heavy accumulation. Just to fast forward a little bit, we come over here, and then uh, you have this tight action. And notice how uh, we go from the tight price action to this wider and looser action over here. Not only is that 
a sign of volatility picking up, but it's a sign that there is a change in the character of the price. We went from something that was pretty controlled, uh, for the most part, pretty consistent, and then you have this wide and loose action. It tries to start to tighten up over here, but it fails. That wide and loose action continues and it breaks down. And it breaks down further. And we wanna be aware of when whatever we're trading starts to have this kind of a change in character. Change in character is so important to monitor because when characters does start to change like this, being nice and tight and controlled to wide and loose, that's something that's telling us that there's a lot of indecision in price, and that's typically something that's going to end up being bearish. When the, a, common, a common phrase in the market is that the, the stocks typically take the stairs up, but they take the elevator down. That's what we're seeing right here, and that's how we see these changes in character from tight and controlled to wide and loose. And then you start to wonder again, uh, over here, you, you get the, this big sell-off, right? Uh, let's just measure this sell-off there. That looks pretty nasty. Let's say you were in over here. You lost almost 30%. That, that's pretty nasty. I wouldn't want to sit through that. One of the reasons why in prior videos we talk about stop losses and where to place stop losses and why they're so important to adhere to because you if let's say you were in this, you could have exited way up here versus now waiting for this 30% pullback. But it's interesting to see where price stops, right? So it stopped right over here at about $45. What does that correlate to? Well, let's take a look. Draw a trend line. And it corresponds pretty much to this breakout over here. To me, this kind of looks like a double bottom pattern when we broke out above this and we started to break out on, uh, started to move with some volume over here. Where price moves to is not a coincidence. We always want to look to the left of the chart to see what, uh, why is price falling to where it's falling to? Where, why is it stopping where it's stopping? If we are really trying to say, pick a bottom, picking bottoms uh, it can be very dangerous, but if we are somebody, if we are the type of trader that wants to try to uh, see where a potential reversal may occur and then be ready to buy that bounce if that bounce does happen, uh, this is where being able to read price and volume action and be able to look to the left really comes in handy. So those are the basics of price and volume action with a little bit of the advanced topics sprinkled in there. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, click that thumbs up button. That's going to help us out a lot. If you have questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will personally help you. Thank you again for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that we get every single update, and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care, and have a great day.